Hi, my name is Valerie. Thank you for joining me today. I have been away from this channel and I've gotten some new subscribers in the last couple of months. Uh, thank you very much for subscribing. It's great to have you here. I hope you find uh, something on my channel helpful. So I wanted to give an update on our homeschooling. I try to do monthly updates, but in the month of December, my family was out of town. We basically took the entire month off and uh, went to um, Universal Studios in Florida. Each one of my children, when they reach their senior year in high school, get to choose a location uh, to have a senior trip, within reason, obviously. And my son, Mitchell, who's graduating this year, chose to go to Universal Studios in Florida. So while we were there, we also had to see the ocean. None of the children had seen the ocean before, and it was wonderful to get to experience that with them. Hunt for seashells. We got a lot of great pictures. Had so much fun uh, catching a wave, you know, in the ocean and, and having that experience together as a family. So uh, that was something we had planned to do for about six months. We got one of the packages from Universal Studios and stayed at the resort uh, for four days. It was wonderful. We were completely exhausted and, and completely happy and relaxed when we left there. Uh, if you're looking into a vacation package from Universal Studios, I highly recommend it. So, And this is not a paid endorsement or anything. This is, this is just something our family did, and we had a great time. Uh, so that was the first part of December. And then, of course, Christmas. We celebrated Christmas together as a family and enjoyed some time off and just kind of recouping from the, the long drive because we did drive to Florida and we live quite a distance from there. So uh, we had Christmas and my mother came to visit. So we just, we took the whole month off. We didn't start back till after New Year's. Uh, I also uh, celebrated my 22nd anniversary. So we crammed a lot into a month. So I'm going to try to cram a lot into this update video. I'm going to give you two months for the price of one. So first of all, uh, one change that I made for the whole family this year is we started doing the Westminster Shorter Catechism uh, by G.I. Williams. It is, um, it's been really good. It's it's basically just, a, uh, it has the lessons, it goes through uh, 107 of the, the catechism questions and has concise explanations of the question and the answer. We do this every Wednesday because that's my son's day off from work and we can all have Bible time together and be relaxed on that day. So we do this together. Uh, we only do one a week because it seems like a lot of information. I did not grow up being catechized. This was not uh, a tradition in my church. I grew up Baptist and uh, typically Baptist, at least the Baptist that I knew did not do this. So uh, this is something I've heard of Presbyterians doing and Reformed Baptists doing, but the type of Baptist I was, we did not do this. So it seemed like a lot of information for me to absorb and for them. Uh, so we're taking our time and doing one of these lessons a week. Uh, it will obviously take us a very long time to finish it. Uh, my son will be graduated before we finish it, which is kind of sad. But anyway, we're, we're enjoying it together as a family while we can. And I'll just keep doing it till we're finished. I guess that's the plan <laughs> for now anyway. So uh, the rest of the days of the week, uh, the kids have still been doing their Bible Doctrines books. This one is Leslie's. Uh, Lacey and Leslie are doing the same one, Bible Doctrine for Older Children. And then Matthew is doing uh, the one for Younger Children. And so they do this um, for 15 minutes a day. I was trying to do one page a day. Sometimes one page was very little for the older girls. They were getting one page done very quickly. Uh, and, and, you know, not really, I feel like, felt like doing a lot of work with it, that, like they could, reaching their potential. Whereas uh, for Matthew, sometimes uh, one page took a very long time. So 15 minutes, as much as they can get done in that time. And then we stop because, again, it's a lot of information to absorb. And so I want them to be able to enjoy it and uh, not feel overwhelmed with it. Uh, this is all new material for my kids. So uh, we'll start with Matthew though, what he's been doing. We finished the first semester of America the Beautiful. In order for us to take the whole month of December off, we had to complete 18 weeks of school before the second week of December because that's when our vacation was planned for. So um, we had to work really hard. So we got through the first semester of this. He did the uh, workbook along with it and uh, has been doing that as well as the maps activity book and the timeline that goes with this material. So we've really been enjoying it. This second semester is longer than the than the uh, first semester. So the lessons that I'm doing each day take a little bit longer than the first semester. Lacey also completed the first semester of America the Beautiful and we have made a change in her history curriculum for the second semester and I will talk about that in a moment. Uh, so we've done that with history. For his reading, we read together a read aloud Little House on the Prairie. We finished that before our vacation. So we've read the first two books in the Little House, House series. We plan on doing 
all of those books. We took a break from that just so we could kind of think about other things. <laughs> just take a rest. We're going to go back to Farmer Boy eventually. Right now we are reading Carry On Mr. Bowditch. I mentioned that we would be reading this one starting it soon and we have. We're about halfway through. We read about a chapter or two a day so we're just taking our time. Uh, he's not doing any comprehension questions or anything on this. We read it together. It's just something for us to do to enjoy uh, because he's growing up and pretty soon he won't want to read with me. So anyway, so he's been reading the Hardy Boys Secret Files just for fun. This is the second book in the series. Now, he started this series from our local library. Uh, that he started with book nine because that was the earliest book I could find and he really liked it so I thought oh I'll start with book one well our library doesn't carry books one through eight at all they start with book nine so for his birthday back in July I got him the first five books in the series and he read the first one right away but then just like with the Laura series of books you kind of get burned out on the same thing so we took a break from Hardy Boys and now he's reading this just for fun on his own uh, for school, he, um, he he just finished reading A Bear Called Paddington. Now, I got this book on my anniversary. My husband and I both are book lovers, and we went to Half Price Books, and I got a big stack of books, which I hope to make a video about really soon because I got a lot of great ones. And this is one of the ones I found. I wasn't planning to buy this. This was not on his um uh, literature list for fourth grade, but it looked like a cute story. He likes Paddington bear and it doesn't you know it wasn't very thick and I've noticed a lot of times with young children it's psychological if there's a lot of words on a page or if the book is really thick looking it can intimidate them and kind of discourage them from reading it so I'm trying to find books that have larger print and or that are shorter in number of pages to just to try to whet his appetite and get him interested in reading because of all my children he's been the hardest to really snag into reading um, it you have to find the series or the type of books that will interest your child. And all of my kids found that um, that series. Lacey and Mitchell both love the Harry Potter books and the um, uh, Percy Jackson series. Uh, Mitchell loved Animorphs. My oldest daughter loved the Narnia books and the Wrinkle in Time books. Uh, so she found her, her niche, uh, J.R.R. Tolkien. Um, Leslie, she likes a lot of the Newberry winners. So, you know, they've all found books they like, but Matthew's been a little bit more difficult and challenging to find things he enjoys reading. He enjoyed this. It did drag a little bit because uh, it is probably more appropriate for a little bit younger age, but he did finish it and I was happy about that. He's now reading The Bears on Hemlock Mountain. I got this book used at our library book sale. They do a used book sale every year. And so it's an old copy, but it has really large font and pretty short chapters, so it's pretty manageable, and it's a good story. It's probably below his reading level, but again, I just want to try to interest him in reading, so that's where we are with that. Also, last summer, when I was at Half Price Books, because I try to go, I don't know, every quarter at least, uh, we I picked up some of these books. Shakespeare Can Be Fun. It's a series of books. I do not have all of them. I have four, and I think there's probably like eight of them. Maybe more. I can't be sure. I'm not sure on that. But I got Macbeth, Hamlet, Romeo and Juliet, and a little bio of Shakespeare called A Child's Portrait of Shakespeare. And they're all by this author, Lois Burdett. And they are written in... It's one giant poem. And the drawings are done by children. And with markers and I can't tell you how much we both enjoyed this now I only bought four of the books because I wasn't sure if I would like reading them there are probably some moms out there that are against uh, giving your children watered-down Shakespeare when they're young you should wait or you should just start reading the original I do not agree <laughs> this has been wonderful it's been great, and I think it'll be really helpful when he does read Macbeth as a high schooler because we did just read it. My my older son did it uh, this summer as part of his senior high um, English lit, and we all read it as a family, everyone except Matthew, because he was so young, and we took different parts, and it was great. We enjoyed it. Everybody understood it. Now, could we have dug even deeper into it, gotten more from it? Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, so I don't think you can ever exhaust Shakespeare. And certainly introducing the story in this form, I think is a great idea. 
so that when he does read it someday, he'll already have an idea of where the story is headed. And hopefully it will feel fresh and new because it will be the original and, and not a poem. But he really enjoyed it. Because it the drawings are by kids his age, I asked him to do a drawing. And so he did this one for me. Uh, he drew a witch from Macbeth. And it was a perfect story for a boy. Um, witches, um, murder, death. <laughs> it was great. He loved it. The fighting, everything. It was great. Uh, so we just finished reading act today, actually, uh, this one in the series, Hamlet. And it was also excellent. In fact, he was teary-eyed at the end of this one. It was a very moving uh, story. Of, uh, I think it's a good version of the original, uh, but you know, that's just my opinion. And today he drew this picture for me of the grave where Hamlet, the final fight takes place. So I highly recommend, if nothing else, find these at your library and read them yourself with an open mind. And it may be something that you would also see the value in giving to your children. Um, so Leslie, um, as I mentioned, she's continuing with this book uh, as well as Lacey. By the way, everything Matthew's doing has been the same. Uh, the things I've showed you are the only changes he's made. He's still doing teaching textbooks. All the kids are doing teaching textbooks for their math, and that's going really well. They're all uh, keeping with their other subjects. Matthew is still doing the Bob Jones English, and we're really loving that. He's been writing some really good papers, uh, stories. Um, he has He's learning the grammar better than ever. I'm really pleased with how it teaches grammar and introduces all of that. So everything else is the same. And she's doing uh, the themes and literature from Rebecca for uh, ninth grade, the uh, freshman uh, literature. And she is already almost done with this book. She'll probably be done with it in a couple of months. She's moved very rapidly. So I don't know what I'm going to do for literature. I'll probably try to find some, some novels for her to read for the rest of the year uh, to try to supplement. But uh, she's doing English with ACE still. She's doing social studies, which is world geography with ACE. And she's really liking that. The social studies paces also have you make a map. And she really loves getting creative and artistic when she's drawing the map and labeling it. And I, I wish I had brought some samples to show. I'll try to do that next time because she's really done really well with those and enjoyed that, which was an, a surprise. I didn't expect her to like it. She's doing the Apologia physical science and all the labs that go with that. She's not really loving that, but she's not really a science type person. So she's making good grades in it. She seems to be understanding it. Uh, so I can't fault her for not just loving every minute of it. <laughs> um, so that's that's about what Leslie's. There's really no changes to her work. Uh, everything is the same. Then Matthew and Lacey are both still doing Spelling Power. And as they progress through it, I just move these little sticky tabs with their names to the next page. Um, so Matthew is um, already in level D, I believe. And then Lacey is in level J. So Lacey's already gone through one level and is into the next. Matthew ha has also done that. He started out in C. He's moving to D. Now, my opinion on this I don't know. I don't know if we're going to continue using this for next year. We are definitely going to use it for the rest of the year. It has pros and cons like every curriculum. Uh, so, so far I'm happy with it. Um, but as far as, is it something I just love and I'll stick with? It's definitely not hurting us. So I, I don't know. I'm still trying to decide what to do, but you know, it's been a nice change. We were sort of in a rut with our Abeka spelling. Uh, so this has been a nice change for, you know, from that. So that's a positive. Lacey's also reading this book, When You Reach Me. It's a Newbery winner, and it's basically in the in kind of like a twist on um, A Wrinkle in Time. It's kind of what it reminds me of. I read it first. I really enjoyed it, and I passed it on to her. Now, I have no idea if she's how far she is in reading this or if she's been reading it. This was just sort of something I wanted her to read for fun in her spare time, and I, I don't know if she's doing it. I need to check. But she reads a lot. She listens to a lot of audiobooks, and she prefers audiobooks to physical books. So she does do a lot of that. Um, she's read more books than any of the other kids this year. Uh, so she is my best reader and she's very motivated. She's trying to go through a list of the classics right now. She's she's doing really well. She's read books that I never had read when I was in seventh grade. So props to her for that. Um, now I mentioned when I was talking about Matthew's Not Grass History that we did make a change because Lacey was doing that with us. Now in previous update video update videos, I've shared with you how Lacey has been kind of bored with her schoolwork. I really am not challenging her enough in everything. Now math is pretty challenging, her English is challenging, but science and history, her literature, those are not really pushing her 
uh, probably as to her, you know, as far as she could go. So that's why I've, you know, given her this to kind of add to her literature because she's also been doing the Abeka of People literature. This is the seventh grade anthology. Both of the seventh and ninth grade Abeka anthologies are excellent. They have wonderful selections of short stories, but they're moving so quickly through them that it's not going to last us a whole year. So again, I'm, I'm probably in another month or so, Lacey will be finished with this. So we'll see what we do from there. But the change for her for history, she 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 was kind of bored with it, um, wasn't really her thing. So she did a semester of it. And then I switched her to the ACE paces. And if you're thinking, oh, no, you know, how are you going to do that? You're halfway through the year. Well, worked out pretty well because the seventh grade social studies paces from ACE are only one semester. They cover different careers. So she'll spend time getting to know what it takes to become an accountant, to become a person in advertising, to become someone in business, you know, do a business career. They tell you what type of training you need, what type of experience, what type of courses you should take in high school that will help prepare you for that career. And so like this first pace talks about, you know, how we should use all of our abilities to serve God. And it will cover art and media and business management and finance. So she'll be learning about those careers in this pace. In the middle of the pace was a skills worksheet type thing where it kind of helps the student decide where their strengths are so they can kind of decide what career they might want to get into someday. So this is only six paces. She'll be finishing this uh, at the end of the year. So she'll have one semester of the Not Grass history and a semester of the ACE history. And so that will give her her full year. So next year, I have no idea what I'm going to do with her. <laughs> Thankfully, I have a few months to decide. So Mitchell, let's get to Mitchell. He finished his American government from Abeka, which is one semester of his history credit. And then this semester, he's doing the economics, work, and prosperity from Abeka. Uh, so far, so good. His desire someday at this point in his life is to open a business, start a business of his own. And so this is something he is interested in for those reasons. Just like his business math that he's taking is interesting to him because it has those practical math applications you would need to run a business so and to live your life. So uh, he's still doing the Abeka uh, business math. He'll be finishing that, or consumer math, rather. He'll be finishing that um, early. It's He's really flying through it. The economics, we've only been doing it three weeks or so, but so far so good. He's also continuing in the English literature from Abeka, and he's continuing with the grammar and writing from the Bob Jones. Right now he's working on a research paper, so I'm mostly focusing on, uh, with the Bob Jones uh, English, I'm mo mostly focusing on the writing assignments that they give him. And uh, he's doing uh, grammar pretests at the beginning of each chapter. And if he passes the pretest with flying colors, then we don't really do the review work in that section. Because why go over something he really already understands very well. So, uh, But anyway, we're not even reading every story in this book. We are reading some selections from it. Uh, the famous, the important things, I guess you could say. And there's also some paintings in here for him to study and learn about. But um, there are some excerpts of great novels in this. There was an excerpt of Robinson Crusoe. So I said, hey, why don't you just read Robinson Crusoe? Because it's been difficult to find full novels for him to read. So he did that. He did not enjoy that book. <laughs> not his thing at all. But he did read it for me. He's also finished reading Pilgrim's Progress. He's reading poetry, hymns sermons that are in this book. And um, then if it's a, a book that he doesn't really have time to read, he definitely will read the excerpt from this. There was an excerpt in here from Gulliver's Travels. I believe there's one from Pride and Prejudice and uh, I think Great Expectations. And so he'll probably, I hope to have him read other, another, at least one other English novel this school year. He is reading one right now. He's in the middle of Frankenstein. It is not assigned by Abeka. It's probably not in very many Christian curricula that you'd find out there, but I read it this past summer and I was, I loved it. Uh, there's so much here. There's so much to think about and chew on. This novel really explores some incredible ideas, and you think, oh, it's science fiction, and it is, and emphasis on fiction, but there are a lot of underlying ideas to think about uh, how Frankenstein or the monster, Frankenstein's monster, how he feels about being a created being, but yet being an outcast. And it's just, it's very moving. And I was surprised at my reaction to it, actually. I pictured it to be more like horror, you know, type. And it certainly 
it has some aspects of it that are frightening, but it's not a horror story at all. And um, so if you haven't read it, I recommend it. Um, and yes, I'm a Christian and I still recommend it because um, if you read it with a Christian uh, viewpoint, it even gives you more to think about. So uh, it's very interesting. If you haven't read it in a long time, pick it up and reread it. I think it would be worth your time. So that's, that's basically everything else is the same. Uh, Mitchell is still working through the book uh, Elements of Style by Strunk and White, which is a book on grammar and writing, which is helping him hopefully with his writing. Um, he is not doing the Bible Doctrines workbook. It was too cumbersome, and I was struggling to keep everybody organized with those Bible books. So we've put it aside. And instead, he is just doing daily Bible reading, and he's keeping a journal of what he read and a thought about what he read that day. So that's kind of going, and then also he's doing the catechism lessons with us as a family. So that's been his Bible. Um, I'm, I'm sure I'm forgetting something that he's doing, but uh, anyway, so he's been very busy. He's working full-time hours at his job and loving that. I never, as I've mentioned in previous videos, I never expected him to find a career that he loves right away, but he is really learning a lot. He's not just learning skills like, um, doing the job, the actual work, but he's learning communication skills, leadership skills. Um, he's learning to work through problems. It's just wonderful. It's been a great experience. This company that he works for is excellent. Now, last but not least, let's talk about what I'm reading. I mentioned that I read this one a few weeks ago. Uh, it's, it's very good, When You Reach Me, by Rebecca Steed, or Stead. I'm not really sure how to say her last name. Uh, I just finished reading Tolliver's Secret as an, a possible book selection for Matthew to read. I really enjoyed it. It's a little thicker than probably what he would like, but it's a good story, very exciting about uh, this young girl who has to dress up like a boy to um, help the Patriot cause during the Revolutionary War. It's uh, also got some artwork in it, which kind of breaks up the, the words. <laughs> as for something serious that I'm reading, I'm reading Spiritual Depression, Its Causes and Cure by Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones. It's basically sermons on the Christian life. It is not a book on depression. It's not a how-to book. It's not, um, you know, pull yourself up by your bootstraps kind of a book. It's a book. It's a book of sermons. It's taking a look at depression, anxiety uh, from the biblical point of view. And in that process, you are talking about the whole person, the whole Christian, your Christian walk, your uh, beliefs, your faith, your knowledge of scriptures, all of these things uh, come into play in this book. So even if you're not, you know, it's, if you're not struggling with depression, if you just want some encouragement, I think you'd find it here. It's, it's an excellent book on the Christian life. So highly recommend it. I'm taking my time going through it. I'm not in any big hurry. I have some books that I'm really reading quickly. This is not one of them. I'm trying to chew on this and digest it. I underline and mark in it for my own. It helps me to remember things to do that. So it's my copy. So I'm taking my time with it. And I just started reading uh, today, The Absolute Value of Mike by Katherine Erskine or Erskine. Erskine? Anyway, uh, by this lady. <laughs> and it is such a cute story. I'm definitely going to have uh, one or both of my daughters read it. It's more for their age group, uh, probably. But I'll read to you the description on the back because it's really cute. Mike plus math learning disabilities plus engineering genius father equal one major problem. The only solution is to send Mike to distant relatives for the summer to brush up on his math skills. But what Mike encounters is 180 degrees from what he expected, and he finds himself squarely in the middle of a large-scale project, having little if nothing to do with math. Who knows? He might even learn a thing or two. And each chapter has a, a title that has to do with math. So, for instance, there's chapter 8, Evaluate. It means to determine the worth of, to appraise. And so it's got these great um, math applications in the book, but not like, um, not in a corny way. It's really, but it is a cute story. I've actually laughed reading it. So, you know, I don't know, ages 10 even, depending on, you know, your child's ability and interest, age 10 to 15, I think would really enjoy this book. I've enjoyed it, and we're not going to say how old I am. So, anyway. I have a huge stack still to read books uh, for myself that I'm interested in, uh, books that I want to read to see if they would be good fits for the kids. So my, my to read stack is growing. The struggle is so real. I have so many books I want to read and so little time. Like right now I'm doing this video and I should be reading. So I hope you enjoy this video. <laughs> if you haven't subscribed, please do so if you think something here would be helpful. I try to talk about homeschooling things and ideas and 
what we're doing, basically. If you have any uh, questions, tips, suggestions for me, please leave them for me in the comment box below. Like, subscribe, share. Any of those things would be appreciated. And it's always great to hear from you if you have a minute just to say hello. Have a great day.